Hey everyone, welcome to episode 5 of Let's Talk Fluid Art, the cozy holiday show dedicated to all things acrylic pouring. I'm Anna Blunt, thank you so much for joining me today. This is the last episode in the series this month, and boy, hasn't it been so much fun? If you haven't seen all four other episodes, you can find them in the playlist here. Here's a rundown of today's episode. Coming in just a few minutes, I'm going to be interviewing my three kids. You may have seen all of them on my channel before, but this gives them an opportunity to share directly with you. Today's giveaway is a set of digital images, some from my paintings, some from my husband's nature photography. Keep watching all the way to the end of the video to see how to enter. I will also be sharing some thoughts on how to get yourself out of a painting rut if you kind of find yourself stuck, and I'll also talk a bit about what my channel will look like in the coming year. But first, it's time to play Ghosts of Painting's Past. If you're not sure how this game works, you can go watch episodes one or two where I explain it a little bit better. But for now, let's bring in the ghosts. Choose your ghost wisely. Our ghost is here. He says, choose wisely. Okay, I'm choosing very carefully here. I don't know how he pops up and vanishes every time, but we have our little ghosty here. This is... Ooh, the Coral Reef Chain Pole. So this one was actually a video that I did in collaboration with Anna Luisa Jewelry, where I did a painting inspired by one of their necklaces. So I did sort of this blue background, like water texture, and then I did a chain pole of some different corals. I had green and red and gold and sort of a pearl color. And it made this beautiful layered coral reef, and I love it so much, and I really want to do another one like it. So there's actually two versions of this video. There is the tutorial, which shows the full process step by step, and you can watch that here. The other one is sort of the relaxing version where it's trimmed down, peaceful, no talking. So if that's the way you like to watch your painting videos, you can watch this one instead. But that's it. Another ghost of a past paint pour has been brought back to life. Coming up next, I get to talk to my kids about fluid art. They'll talk about favorite techniques and some of their favorite paintings that they have done. So let's get to it. I am Elliot. Lauren. I am Kate, and I am six years old. Free. And... I'm nine years old, I forgot. <laughs> I personally really like sketching and writing. And I also like, hmm, what else do I like? LA, do you know what you like? Um, I also love Legos, so that's one of my favorite things to do. I like to color and I like to read books. The way the paint splooshes out of the cup is really unique and satisfying to watch. How it turns out when it's dry. Uh, it goes out all around. Um, a flip cup. I like waterfall pours. How it like slides down the canvas and makes such a cool design. Oh, the Dutch pours? Mm-hmm. <laughs> you and my mom. I like you, and I also like Molly. You. Me? Yeah. I like Olga. This, my galaxy flip cup. You probably have not seen this. Did it ever go up on YouTube? Didn't think so. And what's that one called? Sunset on the Ocean. What technique did you use for that one? A flip cup. 
probably the seahorse micro swipe the most famous in the world i like the yellow seahorse i like it because it has um a nice sort of ocean color in the back and i like the seaweed and i also just like the look of the seahorse um, Mm, the Christmas tree one. The one that I'm making right now. Mm-hmm. Or the or the Christmas wreath. The Christmas wreath. Jellyfish. Wait, no, the sea dragon. The sea dragon. My favorite. My second favorite. Share this video with your friends. Always watch your video. Always put money into it. Okay. Do that. And I will be happy. Bye bye. Thank you for watching. Bye. What did you think of that? I do enjoy getting my kids involved in my art when I can, and I hope you liked getting to know them a bit better. Coming up next, I'm going to be talking a bit about how to get out of a painting rut or a YouTube rut. Some things to try if you feel stuck or bored in your art. So let's talk fluid art. As the year comes to an end and people are making their New Year's resolutions, I just wanted to share some thoughts about how to get yourself out of a painting rut if you're feeling stuck or bored or just like, I don't know what to do, I, I'm all out of ideas. So basically it boils down to two things. The first one is try something new or the second option is go back to something familiar. Number one, try something new. So maybe you're bored with your painting routine. Maybe you're bored with the techniques that you're doing. You're bored, you're just like, ah, it's all the same. I'm not excited by this anymore. So maybe what you need to do is take a step out of your comfort zone in order to freshen it up and open up some new doors. So two ways to go about this would either be picking some colors that you've never used before or that you don't really know how to put them with other colors like orange or something that's kind of like, eh, what do I do with this? Force yourself to take that and use it. Try some color schemes that you never would have picked otherwise and see what kind of fun things you can make with it. You might be surprised at how much you like it. The other way of trying something new would be to try a new technique either one that's completely new to you or one that you've tried before and it didn't turn out so well. And so you're tempted to think, I just, I can't do that. I can't do blooms. I can't do Dutch pours. I can't do whatever it is. You just say, ah, I always have trouble with that one. Okay, so take that one and commit. I'm gonna do this three times or I'm gonna do this five times and I'm gonna pay attention to what I'm doing and I'm gonna learn from my mistakes and I'm going to make progress. Because if you try a new thing and you only do it once, or you only do it twice, then you might just end up even more frustrated because you go, ah, I can't do anything right. But if you try it multiple times, you're setting the expectation of, it won't be perfect the first time, it won't be perfect the second time, it might not be perfect the third time, but you're making progress and you're getting to where you actually understand it and you beat it. Number two, go back to something familiar. So sometimes we don't feel bored. What we feel is frustrated all the time because we have these great ideas and they just don't translate into reality. So maybe what you need to do, if you find yourself frustrated all the time and like this never works out the way I want, maybe it's time to take a step back. Maybe you need to go back to a tried and true color combination. One where you go, this always looks beautiful. No matter what I do, these colors play well together. And you take that and you say, all right, what am I working on right now? Dutch pours? Okay, so I'm going to take those colors and bring them into the Dutch pour. Or what am I doing? Flip cups? All right, I'm going to bring them into the flip cup. That way, you know that you're going to have a result that you like. For me, my sort of fallback colors is a, like a navy blue, a turquoise blue, white, and gold, and maybe a metallic teal. I put those five colors together. I know I'm going to like it, no matter what the technique is. The other way of going back to something familiar would be going back to an easier technique and just say, you know what? I don't feel like being super creative right now. I don't feel like pushing, 
trying to think outside the box. I don't want to learn a new technique right now. I just want to relax and enjoy painting. That's fine. Step back, do a flip cup, do a straight pour, do something that's fun and that relaxes you, and that will help sort of refresh that joy of painting that you had at first. So what happens if you have a YouTube art channel and you're feeling stuck or bored or uninspired in your video creation? One idea is to plan out a series. This could be a seasonal series like Valentine's Day or spring or whatever. Or maybe it's a color series like I'm going to do five green paintings of different techniques, but they're all going to have this one color in it. Or maybe it's a technique series like here's a swipe four different ways or here are four different Dutch pours of different colors that all combine together into one finished collage at the end. Having a series planned, it sort of gives a framework to your painting and your uploading schedule so that you don't have to figure it out each week. You know, okay, for the next four weeks, five weeks, two months, whatever, this is what I'm working on. And it can help you to not have that panic like, ah, what do I do? I don't have any ideas. Plan it out in advance and it might help. Another idea is to experiment with a new technique and document it as you go along. Sometimes we can fall into the trap of thinking that every video that we make, it has to be a perfect painting. But that's not what fluid art on YouTube is all about. Sometimes people want to see the process from this to this to this, and they want to see you improve. So for example, you might say, okay, it's high time I learned how to do a proper Dutch pour. Follow my progress as I figure it out. You can also reach out to other painters and collaborate with them. That way you get some of their energy and their excitement and their ideas as you work together. And this could be another YouTube painter who doesn't even have to live close to you, or it could be somebody that you might know personally and say, hey, come on and let's paint together for this video. Both of those would be great ways to collaborate with other artists. So I can't have a New Year's Eve episode without doing a little bit of looking back and looking forward. So let's start by looking back over this past year, 2022. I started out the year strong with my 31 paintings for the New Year series, which is where I demonstrated 31 different painting techniques, both for beginners or intermediate painters. Then I moved into my Valentine's Day series, celebrating four different kinds of love. Then throughout the spring, summer, and fall, I pushed myself creatively and artistically to new levels of work, creating things like the butterfly micro swipe, the octopus swipe over the background, the reveal seahorse, my butterflies on bouquets. And at the same time, I was creating relaxing instrumental videos for those of you that prefer just watching the painting emerge and you don't need all of the talking. And in December, I've pushed myself even more by creating this holiday show. It has been a lot of work, but it's also so satisfying to see my vision fulfilled. And now looking forward into the coming year, 2023, I can't wait to make more creative, original, beautiful art for you all year long. But I have been realizing that my two video a week upload schedule is just a little bit much for me right now while I'm homeschooling my three children and trying to manage my household. So for at least the first two or three months of the year, I am only going to be putting up my tutorial videos on Monday and taking a break from my Thursday relaxing videos. So during that time, I'll be building up a whole bunch of new material for future videos, as well as making some much needed upgrades to my studio space. I wish I had time to create all the content you could ever want, but my family has to come first. And I do hope to see many of you on my Monday morning premieres. Anna, back to you. Well, I hope you found that helpful. Let me know down in the comments, have you ever been in a rut with your art? And how did you get out of that? And now, what you've all been waiting for, the giveaway. Kate is back one more time to help me with this part. So Kate, come on out and show us what we're giving away today. Aha, it's another paper. But this one says six free digital images. Thank you, Kate. 
My husband and I like to go birding together, and he takes really wonderful nature photos. So since this has been a little bit more of a personal episode, I thought, wouldn't it be fun if we gave away some of his best photos? So these would be perfect for a, a computer desktop background or maybe for your phone screen, or you can print them out and hang them up in your home if you'd like. I will also include a few digital images of some of my favorite paintings too. So here's how to enter. Each comment left on this video is an entry. Feel free to comment as many times as you want to get extra entries. That is totally fine. Once the video hits a thousand views, I will go through all the comments and randomly select one, and then I will notify you if you're the winner by replying to your YouTube comment. But that's it. Share this video with your friends because the quicker it hits a thousand views, the quicker you could win. Thanks everyone for joining me for episode five of Let's Talk Fluid Art. This has been a really fun series for me, and I hope that you've enjoyed it too. If you haven't seen every episode in the series, go check them out right now and be sure to leave a comment so that you can enter those giveaways because as of this moment, they are all still open. I hope you have a happy new year and I look forward to seeing you very soon for another video. Bye.